Anyway, um, we can just get right into it. It's only 23 verses long, so um, and it's just good, but it's only 23 verses long, so we just get right into it. That's Philippians it. chapter 4, <clears throat> y'all. Um, mine has like some, like, I don't know, like natural breaks. Does yours have like... Um, it does. It does? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So you can just like stop at every break and we'll... We'll Take just chat about the beautiful words that Paul is writing with the Holy Spirit's help, of course. That's right. All right, it says, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, may joy, oh, I'm sorry, my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with um, Iodia, and I plead with uh, Sinti. I think so. I think so. All That's right. a hard one. It is. Antique. That's an interesting one. Right. To be the same mind in the Lord. In yes. Case. And I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co workers, whose names are in the book of life. So we know that they're girls. That's mm -hmm. what we know, because he just said, um, I ask you to help these women who have shared my struggle. So. Um, you know, I think we, what we, what we always know is that, um, you know, is that uh, women have always been a big part of ministry. Maybe they're not written a lot about in, you know, in, because this was 2,000 years ago and because women kind of had a different place in society. Um, but here he's saying, he's like, please help them. They've, you know, they've basically been, you know, helping me with everything in in my ministry and so that's that's it's just a good thing to see um, because obviously not not only men um, do the stuff so over half of the planet is women over 50% is women right so so anyway um, I like that I like that um, other than having crazy names what do you what do you think? It says their names are in the book in of the life. In the book of life. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. So um, pretty, pretty cool. So check. Hold on. I'm just texting Paul there. All right. Um, anyway, if their names are in the book of life, that means that they're doing a great job. So um, so they're Christian, and that's, a, and that's a powerful thing. You know, I would love to someone to describe me that way right like hey help Tina she's been helping my ministry um, her name's in the book of life I'm like, yes. <laughs> thank you thank you Lord all right so um, are you ready for the next one Oops, yeah. my thing is <clears throat> verse 4 rejoice in the Lord always I will say it again rejoice let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, with, uh, transcend which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Awesome. So these are four powerful verses, and like we said before, like they're all worthy of... Mm -hmm an Instagram picture or a meme or whatever it is, they're all um, a so amazing. A mug, a bumper sticker. T-shirt, there it. you go. Like, yeah, whatever, needle pointed on a pillow. Like, <laughs> these are, this is really good stuff. And I know that we kind of read them and you kind of pass over them and you're like, hey, yeah, that, oh, those are beautiful words, all that. Um, but in verse 4, you know, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. Like, we need to be reminded that Paul was in prison. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Paul's in prison, and he's like, hey. Do not be anxious. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, rejoice. That's don't, right. Yeah, don't be anxious. And it's like, wow, he should be able to write the book on being bitter or being <laughs> upset or being nervous, you know. And here he is telling this church, um, these, you know, these people that he loves, the church at Philippi, hey, you just need to rejoice. Mm. Like that probably doesn't make a lot of earthly sense. So it must be a God thing. Yeah. It must be a God thing. Um, 
in the commentary it says, uh, Paul's attitude teaches us an important lesson is that our inner attitudes do not have to reflect our outer circumstances. And so Paul was full of joy because he knew that no matter what happened to him, Jesus Christ was with him. And it says several times in this letter, Paul urged the Philippians to be joyful, probably because they needed to hear it. So easy to get discouraged, so easy, you know, we're, um, our church here is in transition, we're trying to move into a new building, everything takes longer than we, you know, than we hope it would. And so it's like, oh, you just want it to be over. You just right. want, you know, we just want to be, hit the ground running. And here we are a little bit stalled. And, and it's like, wow, it's so easy to get discouraged. It's so easy to, you know, just woe is us. Um, mm -hmm. And here he is in jail going, you should just need to rejoice in the Lord. Like, Okay, Apostle Paul, you're amazing. <laughs> you are amazing. <clears throat> I uh, love that he says yeah. that by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Um, so we should always be praying about everything, right? God yeah. should be, or Jesus, God should be in the middle of every relationship that we have and every um, and every decision that we have to make. Um, and of course, and it. If it's according to his will, he'll, you know, he'll grant your request, you Absolutely. know, because he loves you. And not many people really understand the power that prayer has. You know, some mm -hmm. kind of just take it for granted or just kind of push it aside a little bit. Um, but really, prayer, like, moves energies, right? It's a powerful tool. And... If you doubt whatever it is that I'm saying, I challenge you to, <laughs> <laughs> to try it. Give it some, yeah, give it some prayer, right? Yeah. It's, uh, what did that, that, um, that TV evangelist, they called it the hour of power. <laughs> like, hour yes, of power. Sounds good. Send, yeah, spend an hour of power, prayer power, and, um, and see what comes of it. I, I do understand, um, I do understand that it's, it, it can be hard because a lot of times we feel like God is not answering our prayers. Um, but let's be honest, uh, we are um, we are spoiled brats pretty much. And, and I say that, you know, pointing at myself here, you know, because when God says no, we say, God hasn't answered my prayer. It's like, no, sometimes um, the answer is, the answer is no, and <laughs> and I have a lot of examples, um, even in my own life, where I prayed and prayed and prayed for something, really wanted it, didn't get it, was pretty upset with God, was mm -hmm. like, why isn't he answering my prayer? You know, why isn't God being my own personal genie and just doing what I want? <laughs> and he did answer it. He said no, and, you know, I think that even in even in today's um, society, like I, you know, I remember even when I was growing up, I remember that my, you know, my dad would say no, and um, that was it. He was the meanest of all. He was. He was the worst. He was the worst. <laughs> he said no, but you know, it was for reasons, right? Maybe yeah. you know, we didn't have the money, or we didn't have the time, or we couldn't do this, or we couldn't do that, and. And it's and yet my dad is an amazing dad and mm -hmm. loves me so much, and so you know if the heavenly father is is a reflection of that, then duh, he too is going to say no. You know, can right. can I please go play in traffic? Please, please, please. <laughs> <You're> like <laughs> no, no, you can't. And you know, as a four year old, five year old, six year old, you really don't know why daddy's saying no, but dad knows. Mm -hmm. And so your heavenly father, he hears every prayer. He hears every prayer, but sometimes he says no. So don't be, don't get upset with him. He just knows the best That's for right. us. And we'll later find out the reason why he said no, right? I think and so. And then we'll be so thankful. Yes. And like, phew, dodge that bullet. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. You know, that, you know, that person that you, you know, 
you've fallen in love with and you're like, I want to be with them forever. And it, and God's like, no, 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 that's not the one. That's not the <laughs> one. We're going to send him or her on their way. So, you know, and and you're crushed and it's awful. And, and he's like, Ugh, I know best. I know best. So, you know, so, but it also says, you know, um, that it's kind of, well, it's kind of um, some verses later in the chapter. But it says also, it says, so it says rejoice. Then it says, let your gentle spirit, in verse 5, mm-hmm. let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Um, he's coming back soon. So, um, but he says, let your gentle spirit be known to all men. Um, and another another uh, translation is, um like your sweet reasonableness don't be unreasonable um be have a gentle spirit if you just you know if you just want to be mean to be mean like that's that's just not a great reflection on jesus (laughs) and then he reminds us the lord is near like you know he's coming back again but he's also watching so try to be reasonable try to be gentle um in the way that you treat other people don't be so mm-hmm. tough and rough. Um, so in six, yeah, it says, "Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your heart, let your request be known to God." Even if He says no, um, I don't. I don't know exactly what it's like to be anxious for nothing. I have to admit, <laughs> I think that <laughs> I think that that's a hard one for me. Um, I, you know, I'm usually worried about something. Yeah, um, I find things to worry about. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, how how good are we? <laughs> We're like, oh, not only am I not going to be anxious, I'm going to seek out things <laughs> to try to find to be nervous about. That's um, right. But you know, it doesn't. It it's not hard. You know, because you turn on the TV and they're like, oh, this could happen and this could happen, and mm-hmm. you need this insurance and you need, you know, you need to look in this corner of your house or your life or your relationship. There's probably a problem lurking, you know, so it's whoo, but I totally get it because when the enemy like whips me up into a frenzy, um, mm-hmm. when I allow him to <clears throat> to take my mind elsewhere, um, I it's really hard to feel that peace of God, yeah. Um, and he promises that, um, he promises that in in verse seven, so um, that literally that peace that is truly different than the world's peace, right? It's not like, <clears throat> it's not just, oh, hey, I'm just going to think good thoughts. Or, you know, or I'm just, you know, if I just have no conflict in my life, <clears throat> then I'll have peace. It's like, mm-hmm. no, it, it, it actually, it's that peace that comes from knowing that God's in control. And he is. He's in control. So, that allows, you know, people who overplan or people who overworry to kind of go, oh, okay, hold on, I'm not driving this bus. Right. Yeah, why don't I? Why don't I just sometimes enjoy the ride? Um, and I think that's when you start to notice, like, you know, and, and be thankful for like the little things. Yeah. It's super easy to not be grateful, like to just plow right through and just say, oh yeah, you know. So, so God's peace is like the, is how you guard your heart against anxiety, is God's peace. Um, and allowing God to be in control of your life um, allows you to then be like bathed and wrapped in God's peace, mm-hmm. thereby keeping anxiety at bay. It's amazing, like there's like, the um, the solution for our problems is is here. It's always been here. We just don't go. <laughs> we just don't go there, right? right? Like, oh man, it would be really great if we if we went there more often. Yeah. So four, five, six, and seven are all um, are all like power verses in my book. Um, but so are the ones coming up. <laughs> there you go. So verse 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, 
whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent, is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Mm. Yeah, so verse 8 is another uh, powerhouse verse, um, but, you know, verse 9 is, is just amazing too. So it's, um, it's really, uh, have you heard of like garbage in, garbage out? No. It's like a, it's a concept, I don't know, I've, I've heard it before, but it, the idea is like you, um, you know, you, you don't want to be scared, you think you live in a haunted house or whatever, and yet you watch like horror movies oh, right. okay. for like three hours before you go to bed every night, and then you can't sleep, and you, <laughs> so it's like what you're putting in is, you know, is, is a good reflection of, of of how your mind is working. And so, you know, it's, I think a lot of times, you know, this whole whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, good repute, like dwell on these things. And so um, just in this, I just put like a twist, like for modern day, like I think if you're watching like a lot of um, bad movies, and insert your own thoughts on what you think a bad movie is. Like we don't, we don't um, watch rated R movies. Um, it's rated R for a reason. So we don't want that stuff. I don't want to put that in my kids' brains, but I don't want that in my brains either. Um, you know, PG thirteen. I don't know. But even a lot of the shows these days, um, just on TV or whatever. So you put all that stuff in your brain. Um, and what are you going to get back out of that? Um, you know, the world is out to brainwash you. The culture is out to fill you with their propaganda. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that's what it means by like garbage in, garbage out. So maybe if you don't put so much junk, you know, even like social media, okay. like mm -hmm. don't, don't fill your brain up with that stuff because then it's going to be easier to follow through with verse number eight. Guard, like literally guard your mind. Um, I don't know. What do you think, verse 8? What does that mean to you? Um, I just went to that thing where I was. No, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. I mean, it's, it's true. I think that um, we have to train our brains. Sometimes we, whenever we are surrounded by our circumstances, you know, when everything when we see everything falling apart around us, we tend mm -hmm. to kind of just stay there. You know, we need to train our, train our brains about like how to think um, positive mm -hmm. and think about the good things that God has done for us. You know, aside from like everything that's going on around us, like think about like, you know what, I still have a job, even though like, yeah, you know, yeah, I may not like the commute, I may not right. like the pay, I may not like, yeah, it's like, yeah, blessed to have it. Yeah, um, there's so much more going on around you that you have to, you know, that you are think that you should be thankful for, mm -hmm. um, and think about these things and think about all that He has done for you, because even though everything around you seems like it's falling apart, that there is only temporary, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, um, because everything is gonna, you're not gonna stay stuck in that forever. So think about all these okay. other things um, and train your brain because, again, if you stay in that situation or in that um, time, you're just going to find other things to make, you know, to keep yourself there, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think you, we have to push hard <clears throat> mm -hmm. to, do, um, to do different things. So, um, and, and there's a, a couple of you on here um, with us, I know we can we can kind of see who's logged in, in in like our private server. So we know you're here. So thank you for being here. Um, but what does Philippians four eight mean to you? Um, you know, whatever is you know just f dwelling on things that are better. Like, what does that mean to you? Does that just you know? Do you see that like a self help book? Do you see that just like I just need to be positive? Um, you know, or, or is there something deeper? How does that hit you? Um, and how does, you know, how do you work 
Philippians 4, 8 into your life. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for me, I think, you know, for me, like I want to kind of protect my mind and not fill it with junk, um, you know. And I think Veronica is saying like, you know, you need to be a little more grateful, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, and kind of like pull back. Veronica is much more of a, a visionary than I am. I like to get in the weeds. Veronica has like big ideas. And so, you know, so it sounds to me like that's what you're saying. Like, no, no, pull back a little, you know, see, see your right. situation as a whole. You know, you're not always going to be stuck in this situation. Mm -hmm. um, be grateful and um, and just wait, you know, wait. So so it's funny how, like, you know, we can all read Philippians 4, 8 and kind Completely of. Different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, how does how does that affect our life? So so anyway, if anybody has any comments, we would love to uh, to hear that, how you how you work Philippians 4, 8 into your mm -hmm. life or into your brain, I guess. Yeah. Um, Tim is here. Oh, hey, Tim. Howdy, howdy. That's the uh, skydiver one. There we go. He didn't use his real name. He's not today. He's incognito, but we know it's Tim. <laughs> um, so I like. So that's why I was saying, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think of that and always be grateful, like you had mentioned. I love it. And verse nine says, "Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice." If you're a Christian. People are watching at the way that you're handling your situation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't always handle it in the best way, but... Right here. <laughs> this girl. <laughs> but um, we, we get back up and we're like, you know what? This is, is going to be over soon. Yeah. Putting it into practice is, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, you know, we talk about like your head knowledge and your heart knowledge. You know, it's like you may know it in your head, you may know that you know God's with you or whatever, but it's still until you like, like internalize it, and you're like, mm -hmm. no, no, I I know it, like I know it with every fiber of my being. Um, it's it it makes things different for sure. Um, so and then it says practice these things, and then there's a promise after that. If you practice these things, the God of peace will be with you. So, wow, that. I'll take that I'll take sure. that every single day so putting it into practice um, you know and a lot of us um, uh, Jen's on here um, Jen you should post the um, the link to that um, she sent me a, a, a reel or a, I don't know what it is um, oh she says she's very protective of my mental health health and peace yeah I maybe it's something that I've I've developed as I've gotten older, but I definitely, mm -hmm. I definitely want to be more protective about what I put in here because it seems to affect what comes out. Um, but Jen sent me a a little thing, and and the man was speaking about how um, how when you read the Bible, it actually changes things. And so you know he was talking about yeah, you go to church, it's great, and then you leave. And um, when you just go to church once a week. And you kind of roll through that doesn't really change anything um, it's not enough in your life to change behavior and so you know so you read the Bible once you read the Bible twice you read the Bible three times a week but he um, he had some statistics thank you it's a tick tock um, he had some statistics that if you read the Bible four times a week that that's um, statistically when like behavior really changes or joy really changes or giving or so so it's how funny like there's magic numbers you know and so that's that's like putting into practice um, all the things that we know you know to read the Bible I know to read the Bible but until we do it we're not going to see change and so that's where I think he's like practice these things Read, read your Bible, and the God of peace will be with you. Literally, he is like, the God of peace is, is like in these pages, and he's got so much information for you and for me. So, um, yeah, so thank you, Jen, for putting that link up. If you like it, um, you can, I think you can heart it, or you can like it if you, if you stop and look at the link later. You might have to copy it, though, because I don't know, I don't know if it stays there. No, it won't. It won't stay no, there. So copy that link and 
put it somewhere in your phone or in your computer or something like that. So, <laughs> you okay? Okay, sorry. She was excited. She, yes, we have <laughs> clapping here in our studio audience. Just one clap. Uh, just one. <laughs> she likes the TikTok um, or she was killing a bug. I don't know, but it's all good. Um, anyway, it's, it's a... Uh, it, Exposure, exposure to God's word is great. Mm -hmm. You're, we're being exposed to God's word tonight, um, but there has to be practice. There has to be obedience, right? There has to be obedience. It's great if you hang out with Christians, but if you yourself are not obedient to the word of God, if you don't read your Bible, if you don't pray, if you don't worship, you will not, you will not reap the benefits of the God of peace. Your life will be still crazy, you you know you read the Bible and you're like oh okay okay you need more you need obedience. Yep. I'm talking to myself here. <laughs> also talking to myself. <laughs> read the Bible more. Come on, let's do this. Let's do this. All right. What do you think? Verse ten. We're going. Yep. All right. Verse ten. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content, and in any um, and every situation, of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Amen. Amen. All right. So more powerhouse verses. They're like living, you know, being content in every circumstance. Like that's amazing thing. You've probably heard that verse where he talks mm -hmm. about, you know, whether I'm hungry or, you know, whether I have abundance or I'm in need, whether, you know, like all of these, these different um, circumstances, he's like, I'm content, I'm content. And then bam, verse 13, I can do all things through, through him. Who strengthens me all things through Christ who strengthens me so many powerful okay. powerful verses in Philippians chapter 4 I am fully serious we need to memorize this whole chapter <laughs> I think so I think like you guys should challenge me I I need to I, I will challenge you we need to memorize this whole chapter it's 23 verses I'm not saying you have to do it in a week it a can take a, a year day. yeah 23 days yeah, you know, um, John is John's on here, and John gave me a book about um, a man called the Heavenly Man. That's what the book is called, I believe, John, right? Um, the Heavenly Man, and he is from China, and was arrested many, many times, many, many times, and thrown in prison, and was not allowed to have a Bible. And he memorized entire books of the Bible, and that. Um, where is John? Um, I think John's logged in. I see him. Mm -hmm. I, I think John's here. So, oh, oh, I, maybe Paul's just asking, where is John? John, why don't you just say howdy, man? But yeah, so John lent me this book and um, I have not returned it because I have read it a couple times now. <laughs> Sorry, John, I'll get it back to you. But, um, but this man, he would memorize entire books of the Bible. Like, and I'm thinking to myself, there's no way I can do that. But he didn't have a Bible. Like he had it for a certain period of time and then, you know, then he would not have them. Bible. Yeah, he wouldn't have them in jail. So he had to know it. I'm like, wow, we are so blessed and so spoiled yeah. that I think I have 20 Bibles at home and a box of Bibles in my garage. You know, it's like, ooh, that's a lot of Bibles. Anyway. I that's true because we digress. are memorizing and like, you know, a lot of other useless right? information. All the stuff. Yeah, I mean, how many you know. song lyrics do we know? Like stupid songs, not like worship songs, like <laughs> dumb songs. And yeah, from my childhood or whatever. Um, you know, I know all the stuff about, you know, accounting. Or, you know, Veronica knows all the stuff about mm -hmm. her work. And I'm not, we're not saying like don't be a good worker. You know, know, know your stuff. But could we also like memorize the Bible? Could we do that? Do our brains work that well? Probably. I always know when my shows are on. So, you know, like, <laughs> if I can remember to do that, maybe I can remember to memorize the Bible. Anyway. There we go. 
Philippians chapter 4. I'm just saying. I'm planting the seed. We need to memorize this whole chapter. It sounds crazy, but with, hey, verse 13. We can do all things through him who strengthens us. Mm -hmm. How nice we're calling out. We're calling out the promise right there. Um, so what, uh, I, I don't know, verse, verse, tw uh, verse 12, um, you know, <clears throat> clearly Paul's talking about being content. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't give the secret, though. He didn't give the secret. Kept it together. Yeah. He kept it all to himself. That's yeah. okay. Well, <laughs> He's he, like. He left that for us to figure out on our own. <laughs> and I would imagine, though, you know, that in verse 9, that God of peace, mm -hmm. you know, that I think that helps us to be content. Um, I think living in America, we're in Southern California. I don't know where you're watching us from, um, if you're watching later. But it's super hard to be content these days. Yeah. You know, we, I think we have really, we've really like given in to wanting more um, and more and more and more and better and better and better. Um, and we look at other people and, you know, then that ugly green monster of envy comes out. Um, you know, we think that they have what we want or whatever, you know. Meanwhile, like we have enough things to be content. We just choose not to be. Um, so Paul is speaking to us all here, I think, when he says, I'm, I'm going to be content. Like whether I have plenty or whether I, I have or I'm in need, mm -hmm. I'm going to be content because God is truly is truly taking care of me. Um, it says, I've learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. Um, so... I don't know, um, you know, I don't know how that verse hits you, but that, I think that, that kind of, that speaks to me, um, helps me to rearrange priorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we've all been there with Paul, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> not in prison, not I anyway. Not, not yet. yet. Yeah. Not, not for Jesus, but I would. <laughs> That's right. But so we've all been there. We've all had plenty. We've, and then there were seasons where we didn't have anything at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I do remember, like, when I was, um, when I became, I guess, a single mom, you know, mm -hmm. like, we, we were, <clears throat> sorry, we were left um, with little to really nothing. Yeah. Um, and I had to build, we had to build ourselves back up again, and with, again, the strength that only God provided, right? Mm -hmm. But throughout that season, I saw that we didn't lack anything because everything was already provided for me, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in, in ways that I would have never thought. Yeah, you know. God shows up. Yeah, he does. He uses other people. He uses circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, what a lot of people just say, oh, it's just a coincidence, you know, right. that, um, you know, that I got a refund, you know, on my utility bill or mm -hmm. whatever. And God's like, I am working overtime over here <laughs> to make sure that you're going to make rent. This is not a coincidence. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Like, you probably need to thank me at this point. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's crazy that, you know, unless unless you've just always been wealthy and you, I mean, I don't know, who, who is even that person? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, because, honestly, having money produces problems of its own and yeah. so um so can we be content when we have nothing can we be you know can we be content when we're when we have more than enough can we be content mm -hmm. and uh i think that's uh paul is definitely uh calling us out yeah calling yeah. me out on that. there were times where i was like where i was really happy with you know mm -hmm. with what we had and there were other days where I was anxious about everything. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And I. And like it's paying so, the bills. Right. And yes. And it's so oh. easy for me to just tell others, like, well, remember, God's with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. But when you're going, when I'm going through it, it's like all those verses, all that scripture kind of like. Poof. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Can't remember one. It, you know? Yeah. That's it. That so, is definitely it. Yes. We do have to practice this. We do have to. Um, read our Bibles at four times a week because there you go you want the statistics <laughs> watch the TikTok 
You need to read your Bible four times a week yeah. so you can be better at everything so, yeah. and maybe more content. That's right. So that you can see, too, that you can do all things through him mm -hmm. who gives you strength. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, well, let's see. I think, I think, uh, well, in the commentary talks about verse 13, and it says, can we really do everything? They're asking this question. The power we receive in union with Christ is sufficient to do God's will and to face the challenges that arise from the commitment of doing God's will, right? He does not grant us superhuman ability um, to accomplish anything we can imagine without regards to God's interests, to God's will for your life. Um, as we contend for the faith, we will face troubles, we will face pressure, we will face trials. If you're a Christian, I, you can probably say amen right there. And as they come, right, we can ask Jesus Christ to strengthen us. Um, so it's, you know, he's definitely going to give us all the strength we need to remain in his will and to, obe and to be obedient um, as we are traveling in his will. No matter what, you know, bad things are happening, mm -hmm. um, you know. So it's, so yes, it says I can do all things through him who strengthens me. But, you know, just remember that that is in reference to being in God's will. That's not, you know, you making some outlandish claims or, you know, or you want, you know, I can do all things. I can have, you know, I can have eight boyfriends. I can, you know, it's like, it's not, it's not that sort of stuff. You're not like, I can figure out the lottery system and win. You know, it's like, that's, that's not what he's saying. When you're in God's will, he is definitely going to strengthen you um, so that you can remain in his will, so that you can remain obedient, um, mm -hmm. even though bad stuff comes your way. So, I don't know, you I got anything on 13? I think it's having strength in him, right? Like, because it's, I know there's been a couple of times, okay, many more than that, but um, where I just run out and I'm like, I'll thousands just, of times, yes. yes that's I'm like, I'm just going to fix this myself. Yeah. And I just make it worse, you mm -hmm. know, for myself. And he's like, didn't I just tell you to sit still? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't make that phone call. Yeah. You're like, I'm just going to make 10 phone calls. I'm just going to run run around God and do the work That's for right. him. Yeah. We're funny. And even then, God's not like, you know what? She messed everything up. He doesn't be, he's not anxious about anything. Mm -mm. You know, he's like, I got this. Don't worry about it. Sit down. It might take a little bit longer, but. Hold on. Yeah. Let me clean up. Clean up on all five. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, yes, have strength in him because, yes, you can. Through him, you can do everything. Yes, absolutely. Um, but that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Easier said than done. Sure, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I got this. Hold on. Let me just not be anxious. <laughs> let me be content in everything. Mm -hmm. Let me just, you know, let me practice everything I've learned. Yes, yes, I got it all. Check, check, check. Yep. I, you know, for the next three minutes. And then, I, <laughs> and, then, right. and then things might fall apart. But I'll start again. I'll start again. Mm -hmm. So. And that's the good thing about, you know, God, that he gives us every, like, opportunity after opportunity and mm -hmm. get back up and try it's again. It's really nice about that. There's Second a, chance, third chance. I think I just quoted I, Aaliyah. Aaliyah? <laughs> From, like, years ago. Hey, that's okay. God brought it to your mind. So there, maybe you that, there you go. <laughs> it, it must be working. It must be working. <laughs> All right. Where are we in? 14? 14. Okay, it says, yet yeah, it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of our acquaintance with the gospel, uh, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts, what I desire is that more be credited to your account. I have received full payment and have more, more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a, fra a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory 
in Christ Jesus. To our God, to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. That is well, there's just some more amazing, amazing verses in there. But so he's he's um, just being so grateful to them because mm -hmm. it sounds like, you know, there were there were times when when the churches that he started right were not um, that they weren't sharing with him in giving and receiving except for the church in Philippi. So, and maybe that's part of the reason why, you know, the Apostle Paul just loves these people so much. This is such a, mm -hmm. the, really, you know, this is a joyful letter to them. And so, um, you know, it's great that, 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 they, that they've been caught being nice, that they've been caught being generous. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he definitely wants to, he wants to put that in here. He wants to make sure that he is grateful um, to them for their sacrifice. So, um, but I like what he says that I, not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit, which increases to your account. And so, um, you know, that's, that's that beautiful story that, you know, when we give to God, like it, it doesn't, I mean, God doesn't need our money. Like, let's be honest, like we benefit the giving, that's right. we benefit, um, by giving. And so, and clearly, you know, um, he was so grateful, but he's saying, you know, this this spirit of love, the spirit of devotion that this church has for the Apostle Paul, like he he really loved that. He really loved that. He was very very grateful for that. Um, wait, hold on. Let me let me jump back because John is saying, "Hi, girls." He's fighting with his computer, so he must have be having problems um, uh, chatting with us. So, um, and it says, and yes, it was the God man. So that was the book that I was talking mm -hmm. about earlier. I think that when we get exposed to God, we um, never we're never to be quarantined for fourteen days. Oh, we oh, need to be quarantined. We need to be quarantined for fourteen days and prescribed to read the Bible for our prescription. <laughs> there we go. It's a COVID. Uh, it's it's a COVID joke, but we get it, John. Um, yeah, if we're if if we're going to be exposed to God, or if we're going to be um, catch that virus. Um, the God virus, the Jesus Christ gospel virus. Mm -hmm. Yes, quarantine yourself and, <laughs> and head straight for the Bible because that is the perfect prescription um, for getting to know God. Yes. For sure, for sure. So, so thank you, Joan. Thanks for adding that in. Um, you have anything about 17 or 18 or... Um, I see his blessing here when he was like, I received everything, you know, that you have sent over um, when he was in need and when, um, and he, you can see, you really tell that he was truly appreciated from, you know, their, not that they were gifts, but their generosity. Mm -hmm. um, so that blessing that he sent forth, like I've seen it happen even with my grandmother, like, um, I guess. I didn't think I had given much to her mm -hmm. because um, for whatever reason. So I gave what I could and she blessed it. And oh my goodness, like maybe a couple of weeks later, I found that yes, like God heard her prayer. And like that mm -hmm. was, you know, she's a godly woman. And I'm like, wow, she's really like, I was kind Close of intimidated. To him. Yeah, yeah there you <laughs> I was go. like, oh, wow. He this turns is, nothing into something. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and I'm sure that they that they received more than what they have, you know, put out. And mm -hmm. that's also again with our tithes. When we give to God, even though He doesn't need our money, He wants us to really use or practice, like you said, like our faith muscle. Because if you're trusting Him with His with your um, with your finances, with anything that you bring before Him, mm -hmm. He will bless it. And, um, and that's kind of what I see here too, you know. So. Absolutely, yeah. It's a, you know, our money is the hardest thing to part with, and so we definitely, you know, we earn money and then we're like, oh, you know, I can't, I can't give any to the church. I just have enough mm -hmm. to live, and he's got, he's got much better plans for us and for our money, mm -hmm. um, and the favor, and you know, and just yes exercising that that giving muscle is super super powerful um so giving him 
from the first fruits, as it says, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like, all right, don't, you know, you know, Dave Ramsey has a lot to say about this. So does God. But, you know, you get paid, you pay him first. Um, you don't pay all your bills and then pay him with what's left. Right. Yeah, pay him first. You'd be amazed. He, he has really great math. Mm -hmm. um, so he can he can make things work better um, on the way on the rest of the month. So anyway, just powerful stuff. God is powerful God. Um, let's see. And then verse 19. Um, it, verse 19 is just another one of those powerhouse verses. Um, and, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Absolutely. John says he does not need your money, but he wants to bless you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he wants to know that you want to like be in a trusting relationship mm -hmm. with him, you know, so what you know what kind of relationship is it if it's just you know oh god i want i want i want i want I'm not going to yeah. give you anything you know just then it's that spoiled brat relationship that I've talked about before and, and that's just annoying so and i'm sure it's annoying to god <laughs> he's like oh there she is again asking yes for more asking for more when i just gave them in abundance and they want i know more a couple more. of kids like that i know it's <laughs> not easy um, yes, it's, but definitely, you know, he's, uh, we can, we can trust God to, to meet our needs. And, um, and I understand that it is hard to do that. Um, but again, if you're in the word, we'll say four times a week. I love that number. Mm -hmm. Like four times a week, really sit down and read the word and, and study it four times a week. Um, you know, if you're in the word, if you're, you're hitting your knees in prayer, um, if you're spending time with him, I think you will be able to trust him more and more. And and it says that he's rich. His riches in glory. But, you know, he's. it says elsewhere in the Bible that, you know, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills, which is, which is God language for, like, I, come on, he can print money. Let's be honest. Like, not only the government can print money, God can too. That's so, right. There you has, go. Uh, he has a well of just overflowing riches and that he would absolutely love to give to you because he loves you. All you need yeah. to do is ask. He's a good giver. Yes, he is. Good gifts. Um, Jen says, I wake up and I go to bed listing all the things I'm grateful. Um, God has blessed me with. It's a great way to start and end the day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And I think any time we put those kind of rhythms in our life, um, that's what we kind of call them, we call them rhythms, you know, reading the Bible and praying and, you know, spending time worshiping, going to church, having fellowship, you know, and then adding in things that, that can really help you. If you're having problems being grateful, if you're having problems being content, um, you know, I think Jen is, has given a great example of, you know, of things that we can do. And all she's doing is, is kind of just spending time being thankful to God. It's, you know, it's it's not complicated. We don't have to make things so complicated. So that's right. No matter what I say, I I do like to make things more complicated. I would need to buy like a special binder, and some pretty pens, and then I would do that. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, here we go. I've got all my pens. Um, but he can back up his money, and the government can't. Thank that's you, right. John. Yes, that's right. That is the problem. I think we hit a whole new. Uh, I, I read somewhere on Facebook that we hit a, a, a new trade deficit, a new all all time high trade deficit today. So, because somebody's been printing money and it, there's nothing to back it up. So, yes, <laughs> it's, whew. Anyway, um, we're we're getting there, right? Yes, we're getting there. Maria Thompson says, out of his abundant wealth, God will give, especially in our desire to know him deeper. Amen. That's Amen. Right. That's right. When we really focus on wanting to know him more, mm -hmm. whew, yeah. And I always see, I always see Maria, I always see all the, the beautiful posts that you post where, you know, you're so, um, um, what's that word? When you do things on purpose, you're purposeful, I guess you know, mm -hmm. about studying or you're purposeful about teaching or purposeful about loving and, you know, and it's, it's, people notice, right? 
like we were talking about before, people are watching, mm -hmm. and um, you know, when we are when we are obedient and we are purposeful in our relationship with God, He is well. He's going to show up. He's going to take care of us. Um, it's yeah. just it's just a beautiful thing, you mm -hmm. know. Rather than relying on ourselves or working it out ourselves, which I've tried it, it actually doesn't work. Not at all. No. <laughs> I might keep trying it occasionally, but you know. <sighs> That's Pray exhausting. for me. Yeah, it is. It is. Pray for me. I was like, wow, that's is I know better. We really do know better, yes. Um, there you go. Maria says, Oh, thank you. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. All right. Um, hey, it says that in verse 22. Now to our God and Father be the glory <laughs> forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. That's great. Whenever he supplies, whenever um, mm -hmm. whenever anything goes goes well, or when any or when things don't, you know, to God be the glory. What does John said? We use banks, and he, he uses, uses fish. fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. That's, and we need to be fishermen, fisherwomen. Yeah. So yes, thanks, Maria. She says, Amen. Um, all right, are we? And the final greetings. All right, verse 21 says, Greet all God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings. All God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. Mm. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, or sorry, be with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, Apostle Paul. I in my um, In my commentary notes here, it just says that and we've talked about this before, that he really seems to, you know, love this church at Philippi. And so, and it says in many ways, the Philippian church was a model congregation. Um, in It was made up of many different kinds of people who were learning to work together. But Paul recognized that problems could arise. Um, so in his thank you letter, he prepared the Philippians for difficulties that could crop up in the body of believers. Though a prisoner in Rome, Paul had learned the true secret of joy and of peace, and that is to imitate Christ and serve others. By focusing our minds on Christ, we will learn unity, we will learn humility, we will learn joy, and we will learn peace. And we will also be motivated to live for him. We can live confidently for him because we have the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ with us. So 